Hi everyone and welcome to a new video about MOSFET amplifiers. This is our example number 5. In this example I will discuss again the two-stage amplifier, with this case using one N channel and a one P channel MOSFET. And both of them are the enhancement type MOSFET. So we will look at the calculations for this specific circuit step by step and also verify these in SPICE simulations. So let's look at our circuit. We have this two transistors M1 and M2. The parameters of these two transistors are shown here. M1 is the N channel enhancement MOSFET and M2 is the N channel, or I mean the P channel enhancement MOSFET. And you see the threshold voltages here for each of them and also the conduction parameters we will use in our circuit analysis. We have the following data. We have the VDD and VSS which is the DC voltage source for this circuit. We have the RI which is the output impedance of this source and we have also the resistors here including the load here which is 6 kilo ohms. And what we want is the calculation of the voltage gain which is the VO over VI. That's what's required here. So let's see how we can calculate this. The solutions. We start first with the DC analysis as we did in the previous videos. So we need that first. So we look at the situation and we assume for our transistors that they are operating in the saturation region. That means the following. These conditions must be checked and this is only valid now for the N channel. We also do it for the next time for the P channel now. So we will check this in our analysis after that. So the assumption is saturation region. Now this is the DC analysis. That means all the capacitors are open. So this is disconnected. This is an open circuit. This is open and this is also open. So you will also lose the load. Then we have only this circuit. You see the N channel and the P channel MOSFET here and also the DC currents. We also designated the two nodes here, G1 and G2. So first we start with this stage one, which is this stage, this part of the circuit. For that, we can now use here the voltage divider rule at node G1, like R2 over R1 plus R2 times the difference here in the voltage, plus the voltage here, what we have here, which is then the shifted version of that voltage, which is the sh uh, equation here. And we now substitute the values from the given here, we get exactly zero. So it is now a symmetric point here. Now moving on with the Kirchhoff's current law, uh, with the voltage law at the input loop for this part, we can now develop here the voltage loop. We can say VG1 is equal to the VGS1 plus the voltage across the RS1 plus the voltage across, uh, at this node. That is shown here. When you now use also the expression for the drain current, which is valid in the saturation region, which is this formula. And when you now use the ID1, also as IS1 because they are symmetric, because IS1 is equal to ID1 since the gate current is zero. That's also the same for the P channel MOSFET. Now when we substitute now this in here together, you will now get this equation. Now we can solve this if we know uh, all of them except one unknown, which is the case because the only unknown in this equation is VGS1. So when we substitute this, because this was zero, we just calculated that. This is the unknown, this is just 2000, which is our resistor. And we have here the KN1, which is the parameter here, 3 milliamps per square volts. We also have a threshold voltage of plus 1 volts, and we have also the minus 15 for the VSS. Now, when you simplify this, you get this expression, because you take this minus 15 to the plus 15 to the left side, and you make this 6 here. And when you solve this, just using your solver calculators, you get one of the solutions is minus 0.613 volts and the other one is 2.4465 volts. Now, which one is now actually valid? Now, since we assumed that the saturation region was valid, we need to also check these conditions. The first one says VGS must be at least V threshold. Now, this is definitely smaller than the threshold voltage. So this is not what we wanted for our uh, solution and this is invalid. But this is larger than the 1 volt, so this is the valid solution. So we need this and we have now calculated the VGS1 for the first stage. Now, then we get the drain current for the first stage, which is ID1. Since we know this VGS1, we can use this formula. It's also shown here now, just substitute the values here. And you get now 6.277 milliamps. 
Let's also check this second condition because that's about the drain to source force. That must be also at least larger than this one. Okay. We can set now the Kirchhoff's voltage load at the output loop. So from here to all the way to that point. That's shown here. Now when you substitute now the values in here, later when you combine this together, first we combine resistor RD1 and RS1 because they have the same current because ID1 and IS1 are the exact same. Now we have this expression. So we have rewritten this equa equation such that we have the VDS1 expressed in other parameters. And we now substitute the values here because this is 15 minus minus 15 and a minus and this is 2000 plus again a 2000 times the current here you get 4.892 volts and this is definitely larger than the difference the VGS1 minus the threshold voltage for the first stage which is just 1.4465 volts so this is again verified so we see two conditions are valid so we have assumed that the saturation and that assumption is correct. So we move on and we continue now with the stage two. So let's collect the values for stage one here. Stage two, we also start with the calculation of the drain current and the VDS, well, etc. for our next step, which is our AC analysis. The voltage at node G2 can be calculated quite easily by looking at this voltage minus the voltage across RD1 from the first stage. That's shown here. We know this because it's 6.277 milliamps. We also know this. So we can just substitute the values here. And also the resistor RD1, you get here 2.446 volts. Now, we can now use Kirchhoff's voltage law again. And for this input loop, because this voltage node is known, you can go up or down depending on which one is more convenient or more uh, easier. This part is easy because we know this voltage. If you also know this voltage, which can be related to the current here. So we make this loop actually. So we start at this node and we stop at that node. That's shown here. So we say VDD is equal to voltage across RS2 plus the voltage VSG2 and plus the voltage at node G2. That's shown here. As said, the IS2 is equal to ID2. So we can use the formula for the drain current ID2, which is KN2, times this quantity squared. And now you can see it is now plus instead of minus because we work now with the P-channel MOSFET. And when you combine this, as we did in the stage one, and then substitute this ID2 in here as IS2, you get this expression. Now, we can now substitute the values from our analysis and also what we have just determined for the VG2, we get this equation. The only, only unknown here is the VSG2. So we can further simplify this and you get now the equation we need to solve. And you solve this, you get again two solutions. One of them is 1.156 volts, the other one is 2.782 volts. And again, we need to com uh, comply with this assumption of the saturation region. In this case, we take the absolute value of the threshold voltage. So this must be larger than the threshold voltage. And this voltage is less than the threshold voltage of the second stage, absolute value, and this is then invalid solution. And the other one is larger than the threshold voltage of the second stage, which is then valid. So our solution for the second stage is that the VSG2 is 2.782 volts. Now we can continue with the calculation of the drain current because this is known, and we can substitute that in here. And the threshold voltage for the second stage is minus two, and we have calculated our VSG2. We also know the KN2 from the table as the parameter from the conduction. And we have now the 4.892 milliamps. Now the drain, the source drain voltage for the second stage is also important because that's the second condition we need to check. Now we apply again Kirchhoff's voltage law at the output loop here for the second stage. We can say VDD is equal to voltage across RS2 plus voltage across these two, these two nodes, which is VSD2, and also voltage across RD2, and also the voltage at node VSS. That's all shown here. Again, we know that the ID2 and IS2 are equal, so we can combine the RS2 and the RD2 together in this format, and also rewrite the VSD2 in terms of the other parameters. 
And when you now substitute the values as 15 minus minus 15, also the resistors here and also the current we just calculated, you get 12.39 volts. This is definitely larger than the voltage here because that's the VSG2 plus a threshold, which is then this equation. And that is definitely smaller than that one. So it is again valid. So the assumption was correct for this analysis. So we can continue. Now, we now collect the values here, which is now the stage one and stage two. And these are the drain current, the drain to source voltage and the gate to source voltage for the end channel part. And for repeat channel, we have again a drain current. Now in this case, we have the source drain voltage and the source to gate voltage. Let's now check our simulation results and verify our DC analysis. Now, this is the circuit. And you see now in blue the DC results for the measurements here for the current and voltages. First stage, you see 2.446 volt, which is what we had very close to that, actually. The drain current is exactly as we have. The drain to source voltage is 4.893, which is very close to what we have. And also the gate, the source to gate voltage here is 2.782 volts, exactly actually what we have. This source current or the drain current are exact same. This is also close to what we have. It's 4.892 milliamps. It's here 4.886 milliamps. You also see here the VSD2, which is 12. 41 volts, also very close to what we have, which is 12.39. So that's all verified, so we can say this is a nice result. We move on and look now at the AC analysis, because that's the next step. AC analysis will use the small signal model for the end channel, which is given here as the model in red box here, and the blue part is the P channel. You see also the gate one, the source one, and the drain one, which is for the MOSFET here, M1. And for the M2, we have the gate 2, source 2, and also the drain 2. This is not a model. You again, see here that the source to gate voltage is designated, and here the gate to source, because that is also what we have used here in the DC analysis. So, and we have also combined the RD2 and the RL here as a parallel combination, because the capacitors are all considered to be a perfect short for AC analysis. So this is shorted, that means the RS1 is out of the picture. This is shorted and all the DC voltages are disabled. It means they are shorted and also the capacitor C2, uh, CS2 is also shorted. That means it will also short out this RS2. That's why th that's the reason why don't we have this in the circuit. Now we can now break up the problem in three parts. So the voltage gain, the total voltage gain is a product of three terms, which is the gain from the input to the gate one node and also the gain from the gate one node all the way to the drain one node and then from the drain one node all the way to the drain two node or or from the gate two node to the drain two nodes so we have now three equations we need to determine so when you do that we get now a zero for the vg1 over vi that's just a voltage division here in this case, because that's actually disabled, disconnected from this part of the circuit, because that should open. The second one is the A1, which is the VD1, this node voltage over the VG1, which is the common source configuration. And the other one is the A2, which is from the VD2 over VG2 or the VD1. It is also the common source configuration. So when we know this expressions, we can multiply that and we have the total AV, which is our total voltage gain. So our voltage gain, total voltage gain, which is here, which we need in our example, is a product of the A0, A1 and A2. So the AV is then given as this. You can see the blue, the red and the green part. Now you see actually the VG1 and VG1 here are cancelled out. And also VD1 here is also cancelled out with the VG2 because they are equal to each other. And the VD2 is actually the VO because that is that node voltage, which is exactly VO. So we can also rewrite this as shown here. And this is also definitely VO over VI. So this is just breaking the problem, the large problem and three smaller problems, which we use in order to calculate this in a more convenient way. 
So let's take them together again and now calculate the voltage divider first, which is now this part, which is just the parallel combination of the R1 and R2, these two, divided by the Ri plus the parallel combination of the R1 and R2 again. That's first. The common source part is calculated using this formula, which is minus GM1 times the RD1. Because this voltage here is the current flowing through this resistor times this resistor, ohm's law. But the current is flowing here in this direction, but we measure from this node to ground, so that is with a minus. And we have also the common source amplifier here for the P channel in a similar format. And we have again a minus sign. But this time we need to use the parallel combination of the RD2 and the load RL. Now we need to take now these three parts together. That's shown here, so in green, and blue, green, and blue, red, and green, I mean. Taken together, we also see that the minus sign will cancel each other out. And we have now this expression. This part is actually the actual gain. You see here the part of the attenuation and also the part of the parallel combination at the output. Now, when you now use this equation, we can now calculate that specific value of the voltage gain. So let's move on. And of course, we need to now determine two parameters, which are GM1 and GM2 for these two transistors. ID1 is required. We know from the stage one is this, and we can now calculate the GM1 using this formula. And we know the KN1 from table. We have calculated our ID1, it's shown here, and you get this value for the GM1. In a similar form for the GM2, because this is the drain current, DC current for the second stage, we know the KN2. We calculate this and you get this value 12.51 millisiemens. We have now everything. We can now substitute in here. So we can say using the R1 parallel with the R2 is also 500 kilo ohm because that's just the parallel combination of two 1 mega ohm resistors. And also the RD2 in parallel with the RL is very close to 1263 ohms. Now we have this value here and this value also here. So then the voltage gain will be given here. That's all the values we have now substituted in this expression. And when you now calculate this, you get very close to 274. And you see it is a plus, so it is a non-inverting gain. It's quite high. You see a two-stage amplifier will produce this. You can, of course, get this much larger if you choose a different resistor and also different transistor types. But this is now quite high and also the result for this circuit. Let's check this because we need to verify that this is indeed correct. So the simulation result now for the transient response. So we apply here in blue, that is our VI, which is a 10 kilohertz signal, which is one millivolts peak. So the peak peak input voltage is two millivolts. The output here is shown here. The maximum value is 271 millivolts. And the input, uh, the minimum value is the minus 200. 76 millivolts. It is in phase. You can see the red output and the blue input. It is in phase. And the peak peak value here, the difference here is 547 millivolts. And for our calculation of the voltage gain from these data, you can say the peak peak output divided by the peak peak input voltage will give you the voltage gain. And when you do that, you get 273.5 as the gain. And we had calculated 274. So this is, of course, due to the rounding off errors. Also, maybe other parameters we haven't taken into account in our model for the spice. So this is a very nice result and also verified that this is indeed correct. So it is indeed as we have calculated. All right, guys, this is our example about the two-stage amplifier using the N-channel and the P-channel MOSFET of the enhancement type. We have seen that we first start with the DC analysis and then the AC analysis for each MOSFET type and then create the required parameters to calculate the total gain AV. And we also split the problem of the total voltage in three smaller problems so that we can calculate this easily. If you have any questions, comments about this example, please let me know and I will try to answer them as soon as possible. See you next time in another video. Take care.